that morning I got up like any normal day and I was going to bring these pile cabinets and boxes up to school because they needed to get from Grand Rapids to our school. So I said, I live right by there, I'll just drop my vehicle off and pick up this truck. There's a light there at Coit. It turned red and I pushed the brakes to try to stop and pushed it, it pushed right to the floor. Ran through that red light and thankfully didn't hit anybody there. So then I'm going down the hill towards the Beltline. This light that's right in front of us um, was the one that thankfully Thankfully, it must have just turned red for me and just turned green for the other cars, so they were at a stop. Once I blew through there, it was a matter of deciding whether I was going to ride it out down this hill or not. I just thought about my wife and my kids, and I felt like the best way that I was going to be there to see them later that day was to get out of the vehicle. Whatever I hit, I'm still not sure what I hit with my feet, something hard enough to break my feet and ankles, and, but the rest of my body thankfully got onto the earth. I was laying halfway down the hill when the Life EMS people showed up and thankfully were there right away starting to set my feet and get me on a backboard and, and just talk me through. The people from Life were just, I mean, vital to that first probably 30 minutes or so, I would guess, of when the accident happened. I was six days at Spectrum until they felt like I was well enough and that the pain was being managed, I think, well enough to be able to come to Mary Freebed. They wheeled me in. The first people I saw at the desk, the security guard, everybody's welcome to Mary Freebed. We're glad you're here. Just the attitude and the culture of this place was like evident from the very start. I felt very comfortable and it really became my home obviously for the next two weeks. And it was actually sort of hard to leave. I, I was so glad to get home to my family, but because I felt so connected to the people who I was working with and that they cared for me and I cared about them and what they were doing, not just for me, but for the other people who um, were here. You know, they told me right away, you'll get a wheelchair from Airway Oxygen and Paul will set you up, you know, and figure out what you need. And like with leg extensions, I'm a little bit taller person. So we had to figure out how to get my leg extensions out longer because especially the first week or so that I was here, I really had to have my legs out and up. But then as I got closer to leaving, you know, you have a lot of communication with him and other Airway people about what else do we need in the home. So. Our hospital bed at home came through Airway. Yeah, I mean, Airway Oxygen is like the people at Mary Freebed trying to provide you what you need to be as independent as you possibly can be. Now they're the first people I th would think of to call. Clock Mobility, I actually knew about prior to this um, because Mr. Dave, who is a pair pro at my school, um, is in a wheelchair. He's been in a wheelchair since he was a baby. He's now 30, he's 32 and um, they have a van from Clock Mobility. And like I said, with Airway, Clock was who we thought of right away. I mean, in my mind, they're synonymous with how do you help people in a wheelchair get where they need to go. Good to see you. Hi. Can I get in the middle of this game? Yeah. How are you? Hi, Olivia. It's good to be back and see you guys every so often. Those are pretty cool. They're like Mr. T earrings, but you don't know who Mr. T is, do you? Okay. <laughs> you guys all going out for recess? See you, it's good to see you again. Thank you, Grace. Who's got a boot on their foot? I was rollerblading and then I ran into Peyton who broke his thumb. Oh, really? Yeah, and I just my ankle. Ouch. It's a good thing we have so many medical people around to take care of us, right? I mean, I've been processing a lot myself, like what's God been trying to teach me through all of this? Why did it happen? Um, and I've learned a lot of personal lessons, but I think for our community at school and for the kids to see the power of prayer, um, to know that they're caring about me, that they're praying for me every day, that they are sharing that with their parents um, is a big, a big lesson. You know, you have to endure through difficult circumstances in your life. And we might not always have all the answers as to why they happen, but we believe that they happen for a reason and that we need to work through them, but that we don't do it by ourselves. And that's where the community of support that they've been, that my church has been, that my extended family has been, and certainly my wife and kids. That's also where these organizations that we're talking about come into play too. Without Life EMS responding, without Airway providing some of the things like this wheelchair of a van from Clock Mobility, without the people at Mary Freebed who just gave me that push and encouragement to say, you're gonna be able to walk again at some point, you know, you're not gonna stay here forever, we're gonna work you towards that. It's all those people surrounding you and helping you to see like, yes, we can do this, but we're here to help you get through it too.